And we are back live from the Three Wall Ball World right. Racquetball and Handball Championships. We have the men's Big Ball Open Doubles Finals. Right here, return and serve. We have Gambin Vasquez. Is that right? <laughs> and Sal Duenas. Serving will be Samson Hernandez and Ricky Reese. Good luck, everyone. Have a good game. That's the announcement from. That's the announcement from Chip Morales. We're going to 15 points. That was a quick call right there. That probably wouldn't have been called in Southern California, Dave Fink. Well, Chip just spent about 10 minutes explaining <laughs> the rules to the players. Never a good sign as a referee already has missed his first call. Nice shot there from Ricky. Actually, Chip did exactly what he told them that he wasn't going to do. And he did it on the first rally. One serving zero. Samson Hernandez and Ricky Ruiz, number one seeds in this event. Here's Ricky. For those of you watching, Dave, this is actually big ball. The last match we watched was with the small ball. Plays very differently. You'll see the swings are quite a bit different. As a result, you'll see these players swing with a lot of stiff arm, Dave, as opposed to that, that whipping motion that you see with the, with the small ball. There you see what makes Samson the best player in three wall handball, arguably. He'll, he's in the finals, Dave, Three, tomorrow in the singles. Zero. He's here in the finals in doubles. Samson partnering with Ricky Ruiz from Southern California, comes from a big handball family. Brother Shorty Braulio Ruiz, also a top three wall player. Dave will actually be doing a, an HBO mini series on the Ruiz family following them around East LA playing three wall big ball money matches. And these guys are good, Dave. I mean, really good. They have made headlines out here all week long. With those racquetball players, the big pros are actually coming out. Rocky Carson watched a Samson Hernandez match in, in singles and said this is one of the best uh, players I've ever seen. And that's coming from Rocky Carson, a top racquetball player. And I've heard a number of the top pros say, this is amazing. Even Dave Chapman said, this is the best big ball I've seen in a long time. And look at that shot right there. We saw Dave Chapman, who's seated first here. He'll be in the finals tomorrow. Entered the big ball as well, Dave, and really just got pummeled. And Dave is an excellent big ball player, but no match for, for these top level big ball players who play this game every day and have been virtually their entire lives. Score is four to three. The underdogs have the lead here. Gabino Velasquez, server of record, and that ball is called good. I thought it was out, Dave. I thought that ball was in. Four, serving, three. serving now is Sal Duenas. Sal is a, an excellent small ball player as well as a great big ball player. We've actually seen him, Dave, at the U.S. Open there in Orange County, California, competing in the, the men's pro small ball singles and four wall. Look at that shot right there from Sal Duenas. Sal Duane is almost taking out our current one-wall national champion Five, and three-wall three. runner-up, Tyree Bastidas, losing that match in the first round with the small ball. With the small ball, which he's really not known for, but he just told me I play four-wall, indoor, outdoor, three-wall, big ball, small ball. I'll even use a paddle. And he said, I'll play guys one-arm, one two-handed. It doesn't matter. That's what I do. And so what you're is. saying is he'll play any ball, any wall. That's what he said. Okay. And I didn't say I it. I paraphrased. <laughs> They're playing to 15, like two but games to 15. Tiebreaker is right. also played to 15. Three, mm. serving five. Scores uh, three to five. I like that, Dave, playing the tiebreaker to 15. Three games to 15. Not a fan of playing the first two games to 21 and the tiebreaker to 11. It's really weird. It doesn't even make sense, actually, if you think about it. There's no other sport I know of that even reduces their points on a tiebreaker. I don't know where that even comes from. Well, I could understand Look at that doing right it. There. That was a backhanded fist kill, and Chip Morales knows all about that because it always happens to him at tiebreakers well, at 10 to 10. We've seen that, unfortunately, for our referee happen a couple times this year in crucial moments. I call it good. 
I agree with our referee, Chip Morales. Oh, that's funny that Andy Nett, who's actually playing on that line, says he thought it was down. <laughs> Chip said it was good. The referee over here on the line, which is Willie Polanco, said that he thought the ball was, uh, he couldn't see it actually. But Andy Nett, looking right down the line, looking right into the hand, thought that was a double bounce. It was a backhanded fist re-kill. That's actually oh, Andy Nett's best shot, so he would know. <laughs> You're right. And Chip Morales, who thought it went the other way. It's funny how that result is always the same, isn't it? We're talking about Sal Duenas from Santa Ana, California. He wanted to give a shout out to One Shot International. Okay. And the racquetball pro son, who has become his friend. You see that hat that Sal is wearing. That is, uh, he gave a sponsorship to some of the players. He said he gave out over 20 uh, hats and gear okay. to all the top pro players. There's an uncharacteristic air there from Samson. That's a shot that's right in his wheelhouse. He skips that ball. We're all even at five. That's Gabino Velasquez with that long, deep serve. There's so many nuances, Dave, that these players use to create different spins and different speeds of this big ball. 575. Their swings look very primitive, Dave, but they're doing a lot with their hand to spin that ball, create difficult opportunities for their opponents. Watch this rally right here. Absolutely amazing, but Gabino had to deal with that side wall right there, and he was a little reluctant on that weird Gabino kick. actually rushing that shot a little bit there. He tried to sort of overhand kill that ball into the Good. left corner. Just let that ball five get five. too far out in front of him. See Chip trying to make the crowd cool down. It's just an incredible atmosphere out here, David. Just a privilege to be able to play out here. So much electricity and energy. It feels like a late night at the U.S. Open that we watch on TV. Dave, I'm telling you, this might be the most exciting handball match I've ever seen in my life. Right but the, here. But I've heard you say that at every handball event. <laughs> yeah, I know, but. You might be right, I but might you might have been right the, the, <laughs> the other, other 98 20. times yeah, you said you're it. Right. The last 28 times. This is so exciting. I mean, the crowd is nuts, and I know we have a great view of the crowd here with our cameras. If the ball comes out, just give it to the line judges. Chip Morales taking charge Five, here. Doesn't mean he's doing a good job, but he is taking charge. We've actually seen Chip replaced in pro, in pro matches as a referee. <laughs> he, he actually made reference to that, like, do you really want me to ref? You know what I did last time. Look at this rally it, here. Ooh, that's tough. That was just a trip. We kid Chip because we can, but we also kid because he doesn't do a very good job with the clipboard. All right, here goes, 6-7-5. Dave, we watched one of the great racquetball players of all time, Cliff Swain, compete in the doubles just about an hour ago on this court. The action seems even faster in here, Dave, with the hands, if you can imagine that. Yeah, absolutely remarkable. And you know what? You're talking about Cliff Swain playing, but we've got arguably the best four-wall or three-wall outdoor big ball uh, players right now that even play the game, and that was kind of a strange call. We've got Chip Morales calling the score, and then a player calling timeout, and then Chip granting it, which is uh, usually not normal. Samson, just 20 years old, Dave. He's quickly establishes himself as, as one of the top players, if not the top player. This is the world championship, so you have to think, if he goes home tomorrow with the trophy, he's got to be considered the best player in the world. I agree with you. It's a nice title to... <laughs> to hold at 20 years old. Yeah, that's, that's a good point, and it's in the pro division. Samson Hernandez is trying to slam this tournament, as are uh, Ricky Ruiz, who's also in the finals, also his doubles partner. Trying to get in their way is Sal Duenas and his partner from Santa Ana, Gabino Velasquez. watching the World Three Wall Ball Outdoor Racquetball and Handball Championships and the stadium is packed here for this event. That's right, Dave, there's bleachers set up and they are completely full. 
We lost the microphone from the referee, 7 to 5. As our film crew will probably go out there and correct Chip after this rally. Players certainly would like the timeout. That's a oh. good shot there. That's one of those those balls that's very difficult to, to guess whether it'll catch that sidewall or not. That ball actually caught the sidewall and came out at 90 degrees. I like that shot right there from, from Sal. These guys, Dave, are used to playing on traditional three-wall courts with walls that go all the way back to the back line, and they're also used to playing on these shorter three-wall courts where the walls stop at the short line. So really not much of an adjustment for these guys. You talk about the, the small ball players. A lot of us have never played on courts like this before. You these see guys that? very comfortable. Incredible shot. Ricky Ruiz told me after his semifinals win today that he's, he's going to go out to New York, him and Samson, next July, I believe he said, and they're going to stay there for a couple months and just take some money, he said. Well, I think Rookie Wright and Pee Wee might have something to say about that. Well, Rookie, he, he actually did a little name drop. He said, we've already been talking to him. So that uh, sounds like a call out to me. And I don't know if you want to call out Rookie in one wall, big ball. Absolutely not. For those of us who saw him play <laughs> at the World Championships, it's scary. I was hoping, Dave, that Rookie would be at this event because I thought this would be a great opportunity to, to see Rookie play a game that's sort of a hybrid between one wall and three wall. I thought this game would really suit him. Unfortunately, he didn't make it. But we did see some of the other top one wall big ball players come out here. Pee Wee Casho, as a matter of fact, was one of them. And he really got beat. Badly. But I believe Rookie is different. I agree with you. Samson just hit two incredible angles in that point. He angled a ball off to the left and then hit that ball just out the right door. You heard uh, the call there. Hopefully you did. Five serves 12. We've lost microphone from the referee. But it's just loud enough for us to hear it. And that's Samson missing a shot up front. Samson, really a sturdy kid, Dave. I mean, he's very built. That's what you need out here, Dave, in this heat. A, a little bit of extra muscle there, give you that reserve. He's actually, he looks like a little pudgy, but I watched him play. He's absolutely one of the best athletes I've ever seen in my life. It looks a little bit like a young Albert Pujols. I, I agree, but I don't know how young or what Albert looked like when he was young. but Well, that was about 35 years ago that Albert was <laughs> 20 years old, so I have to go back a while. <laughs> I actually get that reference, but... 13-6. Uh, you that know, shot. Dave, this it looks really competitive in there, but Samson and Ricky have really run this game off. I mean, this game was actually tied at five. Now it's 14-6. to six. They've scored nine of the last ten points, and are poised here to take this first game. That's a nice lob there from Ricky. Tremendous get there. Look at Samson, he's just... <laughs> it was like Samson took a break there and all he did is just stood in one spot and got out of the way for Ricky to do all the action. That you see a lot of Ricky's small ball style come into his big ball game. He does hit with a whip. Yeah, Because Ricky right. is also a, a small ball player. He plays what? both. And, and then we brought that up during the, the semifinals today when Ricky was actually going down taking traditional four wall style shots when the other players were doing the open hand. And Ricky gets a little bit extra whip and probably about 10 miles an hour more on his shot because of it. I've actually seen Ricky hit his best shots with the stiff arm swing. Look at that. Samson's just schooling these guys over here. Between the legs right there from Gabino, and it was dug out and killed in the corner from Samson Hernandez. <laughs> that was a great rally right there. Tremendous rally. The pro racquetball player is sitting courtside, love it too. You can see smiles on the faces of all these guys, and there Could you it guys is. Actually, we couldn't hear Chip Morales because he had his uh, he had his microphone turned off. But he had it off earlier. But that yeah, was a great little rally, Dave. Uh, explain what you just saw right there. 
Well, that was an amazing gets there by Cambino. Cambino actually hitting that ball between his legs, keeping that rally alive, and Sampson just relentless with that power. Continues to come after you. Really jams that ball right into his opponents, consistently waiting for the right opportunity. And when he gets that opportunity, Dave, he makes no mistakes. score there was 15 to 6 by the way we do t play two games to 15 and the tiebreaker to 15 Samson and Ricky now just 15 points from collecting the big money and also the the world title Dave I know up the street at the World Series of Poker they give a a bracelet or our players will will they be receiving any bracelets or will that be a, <laughs> a, a, a to go along with their check is that a gold jersey? Uh, it'll be a gold jersey. Okay. No, there won't be a bracelet, but we could wrap it around their, their wrist if that makes you feel better. No, it doesn't. No. Okay, it doesn't. Could okay. you explain to people at home exactly what the gold jersey is? The gold jersey is sort of like that stage in the Tour de France uh -huh. that uh, the winner wins a stage. Well, each uh, pro stop is a stage in, in, your, in your life or in your career or in that series of events that we do. So if it's like the Tour de France, are they going to be knocking on their hotel doors at 3.30 in the morning <laughs> to give them a drug <laughs> test? <laughs> <laughs> Not quite yet, but okay. yeah, these players uh, get that yellow jersey with their name on the back, which signifies that they are part of the, 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 the pro tour or part of the pro series that we have on so they can win that stage. And uh, some of the players that have uh, been, you know, winning those, and, and you're not, you know, you have not won those yet, but they Thank said that... Thank you for the yet. Uh, they, uh, <laughs> you're welcome for that. I'm trying to be optimistic. Uh, they have said that uh, it, it makes them feel a little bit more proud about standing on the court because they actually won one. So this is this is the 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 thing that we give them when they win a uh, pro stop when they represent Ecuador. I watched Luis Moreno playing Willie Polanco yesterday. Both of them had gold jerseys on. Is that they both that? won? Yeah, okay. Willie Polanco won the Fireball Classic in Tucson in the one wall event when we had that 32 man okay. draw. Uh, mainly a lot of New Yorkers came out. It was Polanco versus Robert Sostry. You were in that event. And then and then, uh, Luis won his gold jersey in Kansas City when he beat Dave Chapman in the finals of the KCAC Fireball Classic. I actually lost to both of them in those events. What kind of, what color jersey do I get for that uh, accomplishment? Uh, your your jersey is the is clear. It's a clear mm. jersey. It's called a. Uh, it, it, well, you were wearing it out there. Yes, it was. I was. No, it was I no shirt. Yes, <laughs> it's actually. But we make sure that you don't put a shirt on for that. As we look at the stratosphere, it is 887 feet off the ground as it towers above Las Vegas Boulevard. And so for those of you who don't know, you and I will be tandem bungee jumping tonight just after this match. I don't know if that will be the on the webcast or not, but I'm the bottom. <laughs> okay. A bungee jump. It's a. It's it's a. It's a like base. <laughs> it's like base jumping on a zip line, and then bungee jumping uh, with the parachute sort of feeling. Mm -hmm. I guess it's. They well, say we'll it's find out <laughs> right after this match. <laughs> Can't wait for that. It's only one hundred twenty-five dollars, so you know I will be paying. Um, <laughs> it's right across the strip here at the Las Vegas Boulevard. There's palm trees. There's uh, very loose slots inside with the one-armed bandits. A lot of gambling mm -hmm. going on and. Uh, uh, a lot of fun, too. That's World Outdoor Racquetball and World Players of Handball on the show court here as we get ready for game number two after losing the first one. Uh, Gabino Velasquez and uh, Sal Duenas are going to try to get this uh, game going here and win the second one to go into a tiebreaker. Five minutes are up. Chip Morales round, rounding up the troops and the crowd getting a little crazy out here. Gabino and Sal nice certainly first. in that game, in the beginning of that first game, and let it slip quickly. All right, second game. Zero serving zero. Chip Morales taking charge here. Zero oh. serve zero. Not oh. a good start there for Team Duenas. It's really the last thing you want to do, Dave, after losing the first game badly. Zero serving zero. Come out on that first serve and hit it long. Ooh, look at that overhand tomahawk. It was dug out by Sal, who gets out of the way, and he does it again, and it looks like he rolls it out. He misses it. No, no, he you did roll it. that ball. He did miss zero, hit that ball, but zero. got just enough of it. Just missing that left corner from our vantage view, and that ball's in. Oh, wow. Incredible eye there from Ricky. That's that ball couldn't have out. been more than an inch out, and he let it go. One serving zero. Great awareness. My eyes are fooling me. That's really Ricky's bread and butter there. Look at that sidearm four-wall shot. It's so hard to take that off that sidewall, too. 
for those of you who don't know, Dave, that doubles alley is actually not Two, seven, in play zero. here in for handball. The handball players play the outside line, which makes the court 23 feet wide. The traditional handball court is 20 feet wide, so it's a little bit of an adjustment, and Two. it's also a little bit more running. Look at this amazing get right there from Gabino, who's going to go after it again, and he digs it into the corner. The crowd loves it. Two backhanded shots with his right hand to the front wall from Sal Duenas, and then Zero Gabino seven, goes, kills it in the right corner. Zero serves two. It's just a side out, though. Samson very comfortable with that left. Amazing get. Wow. Incredible anticipation. He just dumps it in the front. Look at Samson just controlling this court here. Sal, incredible ending rallies with both One hands. We've seen him kill two balls here with his left up on the front court, Dave. You want to talk about incredible hand-eye coordination, hold it, hold Dave. Point, point, Ooh, no, no, point. that's tough. No, he him. said hold it. I well, that's... Hold, but it hit him at the same time. He had no chance to move the out of the way. The referee has a discretion there I'm to say he if he hit. was unable you know to get out of the way, even Sorry, if he did but, call a hinder, you know, it's still a point. Point. If I'm not sure if you two followed me there. Two. I, I agree with you. That's actually in the rules. I agree with you. As a player, it's tough. As an opponent, it's tough to hear that. But Great shot there from Ricky. Uses the angle there and redirects that ball into the left front wall, side wall, and rolls it out. That ball skipped. Three serving two. Scores now three to two. Ah, that's another skip right there. He had the open opportunity, just missed it by that much. Actually stood up a little bit there. He did take a four wall side sidearm whip swing there and just came out of it. That's a nice shot there from Ricky. The fundamentals are so different, Three, Dave, in the three. swings between the big ball and the small ball. The big ball, you actually want to face the front wall with your shoulders and use that sort of bowling ball open-handed paddle swing. Really don't need to turn your shoulders all that much, Dave, to hit three, the ball here in big ball. Three. ball looked like it would have been close to being out. These guys know every inch of this court, though. Great shot there. Incredible, Dave. They know exactly when to play defense and when to play offense Point. and how to play defense. Very difficult Four, to play three, defense three. on a court like this, Dave, with the big ball. Also, there's another little strange nuance to this game that you and I don't, I don't think we've ever really seen it. The return of serve, return of server, I guess you would say in this case, it would be Three, Samson seven, Hernandez. Four. He will show the, the, the server where he's standing, then he'll, he'll run back right during the, the backswing, like saying, I'm up front, and then I come back, you know. I guess you can see a little bit of that in Toledo and small ball, but four, seven, here four. they make it, they do, you, you see a lot of weird shifting out there, mm. like a defense in football making a, standing up and going around here. You're seeing a lot with Gabino and Sal Duenas. I'll point it out when it happens again. There's an unusual hand there, there from Sal. Just hit that ball on the side of his hand. Four serving four. Four serves four. Very similar, Dave, to the first game where play was extremely tight there. Hold it. Before Sal and Ricky ended that game on a four 11 to one four. run. Samson will be playing the final tomorrow morning against his doubles partner, Four, Ricky seven, Ruiz. Four. Okay. That's what I said earlier. They're going to go for a slam. Both of them are going for the slam right now. This is the first part of the slam. You saw Sal wanting to take that behind his back, and for some reason he didn't shift around because it's hard to get your hand up there unless you jump. I think he thought his partner was behind him there. He wasn't. Five serves four. Great Five. shot wow. there. Sal is aggressive on that return of serve, comes in and takes the ball out of the Six air. Serving four. Samson takes that out of the air. Ooh, tight. 
That, that would have made I'm it. I'm going to call that over. Yeah, yeah. You see a little kind of hesitation from Chip there, but that ball would have flipped right up to the front wall. I can understand why he said that. Because it was an amazing get. Wow. That's Ricky's best shot, that overhand spike into the left corner. That's a shot that is a high percentage Seven, shot, Dave, with the big ball. And this is kind of exactly what we saw in that first game, Dave. The lead was, the game was tied at four or five, and then. Eight, serving four. Very quickly. Ricky and Sampson take control. Ah, you heard Ricky say he was going to take that. He was going to come out and cut that ball off that angle. It's very good communication between the two. That ball went out wide, though. Rick, Ricky sensed that that ball was going to check up off that right wall. Very fast communication. Good ball. That was a bad call, though. And you hear Samson say, my bad. He, he said out, and Ricky was going to take it. But Samson overruled his own partner. Nine to four. We'll see if that blunder can, can help Sal and Cambino here. No, I thought he wanted that one. Yeah, yeah, I thought he wanted that one. That's a good call by a referee. I didn't want to take that one away from him. Four serving nine. Four serves nine. We're going to 15. Ricky and Sal now just six points from capturing this title. They would be the first pro men's world champions, three wall world Five champions. Five serving nine. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We have our men's small ball finals tomorrow, singles and doubles, and also yeah, big ball singles to tomorrow. Five serving nine. Ooh, Sal Duenas taking that dump shot. Looked like he almost did that with a fist, though. Six serving nine. I know it was open hand, but it had that fist look to it. See how he, he starts with a fist, but he opens his hand at impact, Sal Duenas. You know, David, it's amazing just how quickly these points are played. It's There's no time between points. You know, we're so used to in a four wall seeing that about 10 to Seven, 20 seconds between nine. each point. These guys are ready to play well, within Seven, four or five seconds each time. Rallies consistently 20 or more shots. Of course, as soon as I say that, we see a two shot rally. That was almost unreturnable. Seven serving nine. Seven serves nine. I like that right there. Waiting for it to Sal, though. Oh, we tried to take that and fly it. Ball coming straight down. Look at that. Acrobatic move. This is doubles at its best right here, Dave. Hold it. Oh, good call. I called it over. I called it over. I'm sorry. I just didn't think he had a good look at it. Thanks. <laughs> Not so sure it mattered if he had a good look Seven at that. Serving nine. That ball was going to squelch out no matter if he was sitting there for two weeks watching. I still don't know what squelch means. Here you say it a lot, though. Just, I'm it's not my sure word. What it means. It's my word. It does it really have a meaning or is it just something you say? It has a meaning that has nothing to do with <laughs> okay. what I'm referring to it as. It's my own definition. Ricky misplays that ball. Should have let that ball bounce into the side wall and come out, would have had a setup. Nine serving nine. Scores nine to nine. That's a great shot. Ooh, when it went Ball's out, just though. out. Ten serving nine. And now the momentum's clearly shifted, Dave. Eleven serving nine. Eleven to nine. A couple mistakes from Ricky and Sampson and some great shot making from Salen. It's a good shot. Look at that get right there though. Almost got it up there. 
Velasquez dove in. I like that sort of pre-dive that uh, Gabino has where he, he kind of hits the ground and then gets the ball. It's kind of a strange dive. It's, that, it's sort of like a Pete Rose dive into third base between the legs slide. Gabino, he, I've seen him do this before where he, it's kind of like a delayed in the air waiting for the ball to get to the very finest right the second before he hits the ground and then he pops it back up. A lot of other guys slide on the ground and try to dig that out. He's in the air and then he flips it and hits the ground. Almost like a Kobe or Michael Jordan, they get in the air, then they decide what they're going to do because they can hang for that extra split second. Well, that's what Gabino has is hang time. And that's what we're doing. We're actually hanging 10 out here. We've got uh, a whole bunch, 10 courts. Oh, okay, maybe it's nine. We're hanging nine out here. Nine yeah. courts at the uh, Stratosphere parking lot. <laughs> I tried, to, I tried to get out of the ditch that I dug myself into on that one, but it didn't work. We're across the street from the Stratosphere Hotel and Casino for the men's big ball doubles finals. Samson Hernandez and Ricky Ruiz. They're back home watching. Ricky from Downey, California. Samson from pretty much from the same area. They play all around Los Angeles. Samson said, you know, I really don't have a park that I play in. I, I try to play at uh, La uh, Miranda at the LA Fitness but he said, I'm in parks everywhere, and, and we've heard that from these big ball players. And then Velasquez, and, uh, and then we have uh, Sal Duenas from Santa Ana, California, and they have some modified three-wall courts, the short court, those little three-foot, five-footers they play, and they sometimes go long court as well. We lost the audio from Chip Morales. Nine serves 11. Samson Hernandez serving. Second game. Point. That's, the, that's what Samson and Ricky need. Quick point coming in here out of the timeout. Point, yeah. I thought he cracked out and he went that way. A referee also from California, Dave. Fresno area. He plays some Ten, big ball. 10 serving 11. 10 serves 11. After watching these guys play big ball. Good ball. Good ball. One down. Chip is like a... Uh, 10 serving 11. One of the pro tenders. Because these guys are elite. The best of the best. Best I've ever seen. That's a nice shot there from Ricky. Boy, just pushing him <laughs> left and right. Look at that get from Gabino. Hold it. Oh, hold it, hold it. Really was an avoidable right there, Dave. Cambino stepping right in front of Samson shot. 10, serving 11. Now we have a shift in sides here. Gabino going over to the left side and Sal Duenas flipping over to the right. That could be a conditioning thing. Wow, acrobatic up there in that left corner. The, the rules a little bit 11 serving 10. A little bit modified, Dave. I mean, they let the players play a little bit more. I agree. And I like it. A lot of it has to do with the ball and the speed of the ball. The players do have a little bit more time to react to it. That corner kill very... Nice nice Ineffective, round. Dave, in big ball doubles. That ball hangs up into that one down, right one down. corner. 11 serving 10. We're going to 15, it's 11 to 10. Sal and Gabino trying to force this into a tiebreaker. But you only know that shot if you play on these type of courts. Stays in. Good ball. It just hits the corner over there, Dave. Is that absolutely amazing? Tremendous shot. Our line judge, Willie Polanco, just immediately yeah, says that's in, knowing that everyone's going to look to see if it's it was in or out. And I agree. That ball was just right on that corner. Okay. 10, serving 11. Scores 10 to 11. You know these guys are tired, Dave. That ball's out. Out. You know these guys are tired and no one's taking timeouts. I mean, I'm not sure they are tired. I might disagree with you there. Yeah, it'll be That's fine. my it'll right. Be so are they're in better shape than you are. 
well, I think big ball doubles is 11, a little 11. bit less taxing than small ball singles. Hmm. Doesn't look <laughs> less taxing to me. Hold it. That's a good call. Eleven serving eleven. Yeah. Thought Ricky had made that shot. Just barely missed hit that ball. Eleven serving eleven. Scores eleven. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, sorry. Sorry, Sal. I was looking at the crowd calling the score so they can hear. Yeah, overall. Ready? Well, at least Chips has his priorities right. 11 serving 11. 11 serves 11. Men's second game of the doubles finals for big ball. Hold it. Boy. Chips stepping in quite a bit here, Dave. 11. It's a good serve and a great return. Not a good shot there. The floors are just slick enough that you, you try to make an adjustment. You see the, a lot of players sliding out here. I disagree. I think the floors 11, have sorry. tremendous traction. 11, as good a traction 11. as any floors I've played on. Yeah, I just did a live interview with Dave Chapman. And he said that it was really slick out there. He actually doesn't play with the right shoes. And that could explain a lot of that. That's why he's the current national champion in three wall. Doesn't mean he's playing with the right shoes, though. 11, serving 11. <laughs> That's a good point. Imagine how much better he'd be with the right shoes. <laughs> you might score zero instead of one. Good dude. I'm here. I always love going to an outdoor event. 11, serving 11. The fans are smoking cigarettes while the players are playing. That always seems to be pretty healthy. <laughs> I'm not that I'm getting off the subject of that last subject, but... The cigarettes are no unhealthier than the food that's being served. Haven't eaten it. Ooh, that Good. ball stays in. Ball. Right on the line. That ball squelched right off that left side Good wall. Good Caught ball. that sideline. It was good, yeah. Mm. Half out. 11, serve 11. I only, I only use the word squelch if it's less than five feet. Okay. But you can you can you can bring it up a little bit like that. Ten feet, I guess, is good. Not sure what you mean by five and ten feet. Well, you you said it was ten 12, feet off the. 11. Yeah, you know when the ball's you know down low is when I use squelch. When it's up higher, I use another word. Regardless, though, a squelch is a squelch, whether it's <laughs> five feet or twenty feet. Eleven okay. serving twelve. I just like to come up with a new word for that. Mm -hmm. when it goes high. I like to use the word shaved. Great get there from Ricky. He made the adjustment with the hang time in the air there. Eleven serving twelve. Eleven to twelve. We're going to fifteen. Nice lob there. Here's the setup. Hold it, hold it. Ricky has not had much success with that. Sidearm whip swing. Yep. Trying to end rallies. 11 serving 12. Hold it. Eleven serving twelve. Have you noticed here, Dave, that these servers have really not they have really not had that false serve, where they've 12, either served the short 11. or out the side walls or off the deep line. It really doesn't seem to affect them much with that rule change. Well, you don't know what kind of serves they might go for given two serves. They might go for more of an angle, and what we're seeing now is pretty much all four players playing it safe. Okay. Saw Ricky Ruiz go off the court. Half out. 12 serves 11. 12 serves 11. Ricky Ruiz is 21 years young. I like that shot. Could have gone out, but that was a good idea for Ricky. 
Ricky got himself set up too soon for that shot and made that That's easy to anticipate in, right? for right Cambino. All right. He was on Let's top go. of it. 11 serving 12. Look at that get right there. Samson, for some reason, hits it right over to the left. Doesn't really. Excuse me, it was Gabino who hit it over the left after Samson was 12, on the ground. 12. I don't know 12, about 12, bouncing 12. the ball off the wall after the score is called. Is that legal, Dave? Well, I saw Cliff Swain has that habit of constantly bouncing the ball into the front wall before he serves. Not really, I don't understand that either. So. I know if you were the ref, you'd enforce a 10 second rule and call a side out. I've seen you do it. You're actually the only person I've ever seen do it. Well, after the player took a 26 second kind of break after calling the serve, I had to do something. Well, I can understand sending a message, but I'm not sure 10 10 in the tiebreaker was the right time to do it. <laughs> when there was thousands online, but you know, I, <laughs> I had my going out party, I guess. Or my coming out party. One wow. of the two. I think it was more going out than coming. coming going. Out. Yeah. And that one is deep, but not too deep. A tremendous shot there. That's called threading the needle there, Dave. Great shot. There's that paddle killing to the cross corner. Have out. 14 serving 12. Score is 14 to 12. Could be looking at a tiebreaker here, Dave. One more point from going to a tiebreaker. That ball just barely catches the sidewall. Nice adjustment. Ooh. Great clutch shot there from Ricky. Timeout. That's the most effective shot guys. with the big ball. Takes that ball into the cross corner. I think that's the most effective shot with the small ball as well on these courts. And you saw what happened to Gabino who was taking a step back. He tried to make the adjustment and he just slid out. Maybe he's probably wearing Dave Chapman's shoes. You're watching the three wall ball world outdoor racquetball and handball championships across the street from the Stratosphere in Las Vegas, Nevada. My name is Dave Vincent alongside my best friend that wears a headset, Dave Fink. And we have Jeff Kastner, Omar Lemus, and Chris Garad. You know Chris back here doing all the work on the engineer and work here on the computer with the, the things is mm -hmm. what I like to call it. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things back here <laughs> behind us. <laughs> there is. There's wires and stuff. <laughs> and that's what Chris is doing. He's the guy that is responsible for every graphic and every camera switch and everything that you see on this live broadcast. Timeout. Now being called back in. Who would you rather be here, Dave? Serving at 12 to 14 or receiving at 12 to 14? Well, the last few change of hands, uh, Team Hernandez has only scored one point out of the last five. And there's a quick half out. And you know that does favor the guys <laughs> that sit back there with 14. Well, and certainly now with one server, you'd rather have 14 receiving. That's a Ball's mistake out. there, and that's a souvenir for the webcast booth, but we gave it back anyway. So we're a lot like the fans at Wrigley Field. We throw them back in. This might be going to a tiebreaker right here, and this is what nobody thought would happen. That's why the crowd's been fairly quiet here until this point. Here it is. I actually predicted a tiebreaker. See Samson coming in here. Now you see Sal changing. There could be a 10 second call here. No call from Chip Morales, letting him play. He saw the two playing with each other. This isn't the Harlem Globetrotters. Nope, nope, he called it, and there it is. It's going to a tiebreaker. He actually got that ball. We're right on top of that line there. He did pick that ball up before it bounced twice. Ricky Ruiz actually calling the double bounce on himself. So Ricky and Samson, the number one seeds against the, the number two seeds here in, in these games. Actually, it is a little bit messed up as we, as we look at the, at, at the actual seedings, but we have uh, Gabino, and now you see Chip Morales telling Gabby that he can't uh, take more than 10 seconds, and I know that's what they're talking about right now, but forget about all that stuff, Dave. This is the underdog in uh, 
Valasquez uh, uh, sitting over there with his partner, Sal Duenas, uh, taking the big shots, the number one and two best players in Southern California, to a tiebreaker, and now the crowd seems to be charged up just a little bit. Actually, our number one seeds in this event were a celebrity pro-am. That were <laughs> It was a, a pro-am team. Dave Chapman and uh, the great Marty Hogan were the number one seeds in big ball as sort of a, uh, a fun little gift that was given to them. And uh, they got exited fairly quick in their first round match. And it actually led out to what has become a tremendous big ball doubles championship final here as we head toward that tiebreaker on the show court at the Stratosphere in the parking lot here. And now you see a lot of the players uh, jarring back and forth. And I, I don't, you know, this is, this is something about big ball that's just different than a lot of other forms of handball. The, the, the teams are out here jarring with each other in the middle of this timeout. They, you know, they all know that they are the best doubles teams in Southern California, and they've got a relationship where they're big rivals. And uh, you can see that there's, there's discussions going on over here. Uh, that, that it's kind of heated, but it's friendly, but it's kind of competitive. Dave, what do you make of this? Well, I'd like to get Chris Garrard um, have a microphone in that area right there and see what actually is being said. But it is interesting. These guys are spending their time in between games prior to a tiebreaker to win a world championship, just sort of bantering, chatting. It looks pretty friendly, but you never know. But it looks like they're discussing a call or a play or uh, something kind of strange out there. I really don't know. But anyway, you're watching the World Three Wall Ball Outdoor Racquetball and Handball Championships live from the parking lot of the Stratosphere Hotel and Casino alongside Dave Fink. My name is Dave, name is Dave Vincent. Chip Morales is the referee. Chris Grad is the engineer. We have Omar Lemus and Jeff Kasser operating the cameras. And we have had a, a great event from a pro player's perspective, Dave. Have, you know, what do you think of this event when it comes to, you know, the vibe and, and what is trying to be accomplished here with racquetball and handball being put together? I think the idea behind it is phenomenal. This is our first year doing it, so I think probably everyone learned a lot about, you know, how to set up the tournament for next year. What I'd like to see, though, is a little bit more camaraderie, maybe some sort of exhibition between the racquetball players and the handball players to sort of draw both groups together. Because what we saw here is that, you know, the racquetball players are on one side and they're having their competition, the handball players are on the other side. I'd like to see for next year sort of everybody come together uh, and really enjoy the, the fellowship together. But as, as for the event, Dave, it's just certainly an incredible event. It's an amazing idea. Incredible amount of hard work and sponsors coming through here nearly 500 participants which is tremendous and I agree with you too on that uh, bringing the two together I mean it, it's really difficult but it's also you see in a lot of crossover where they're, there's they're, they're coming over but they're they, they just don't they don't really know the group and if, it, if and, we and could and schedule versa. some sort of match where the top racquetball player would play the top handball player in a game to 11 hands the hands and then maybe the handball player takes the racket plays the racquetball player in racquetball all right, just zero sort of serving zero. a thought, but I'm sure Dave, you, uh, no, I with agree. you and your brilliant marketing brain, might come up with something. Hold it, hold it, hold it. There was some contact there. What we were thinking about is doing an outdoor type Olympics, and we're going to in incorporate paddle ball, uh, have zero, the paddle zero. ball players, racquetball and handball, and do an outdoor Olympics with about 15 portable courts right here on the same location, but put up a lot of netting between the courts because we're seeing a lot of these errant balls that are being thrown around. People getting hit in the head with a paddle ball is not going to feel good at 140 miles an hour. Not sure what you mean by paddle balls. Paddle tennis? Sorry, I or they're going to use like paddles to play racquetball? Yeah, kind of a, you know, like Robert Sostry plays. Okay. It's, a, it's, a, it's very big and, you know, we could bring them out Zero here on these courts one. and play that way. Zero serves one, tiebreaker. Ooh, that's tough. Apparently there was some sort of injury yesterday okay? with Ricky and Samson taking right? on a team and okay? Samson, I believe, diving it. into someone and actually injuring their leg, yeah. resulting in a forfeiture. I don't quite understand okay. <laughs> a lot of this. Is talking back and forth like I'm sorry about that. I mean, you know, it's Zero it, serving this one. is sports. People run into each other all the time, but they don't apologize like this. This is almost obsessive. 
it's, I think it's a lot of mental leveraging, honestly, Dave. Whatever. That I think means. it's just unnecessary. You just <laughs> take the call and walk back to either the service box or the zero serving one. Receive the serve. I'll tell you, I would not want to have Samson run into me. That would be the equivalent of well. One serving Chris one. Chris Johnson running into you at full speed. Ooh, that's a tough one right there. Chip said he thought he had a good look. Good look on the wall. Looked like Sal actually might have hit his hand against that. There was a I thought he had a good metal divider there. I didn't see the contact. No one's saying sorry now, Dave. Well, I thought he I thought he took his shot and then you were right there. So, so, okay. See, Ricky's in a position just of not even having to answer hands, anybody so right now. He can just turn his shot. back. I thought you had a good shot. There's nothing to okay. say when the call one goes in one. your favor. One serves one. Hold it! Oof. Another quick call right there. I just, I just see it. It's getting tight here. They're saying that it hit his shorts. Did you see it hit his shorts? No. I mean, no look how big off. those shorts okay. are that Samson is wearing. How could it one not? One serving one. One serves one. Those shorts might even fit you, Dave. I think they're almost big enough. Nice. Great shot there from Samson. I wear those and it looks like spandex. <laughs> Two serving one. You're not <laughs> exaggerating. I know. Sometimes I say things that are truthful. Wow, look how tight these players play together. You know that affects Sal, but yet... I'm not sure it does. That was just a, a very strange Three air. Serving one. That ball squelches, but Samson handles it. Ooh, miss hit right there from Samson Hernandez. That's about the easiest shot you can get. That ball floated right to his right hand. He was about the foot fault line. Three look at, serving one. Look at, Ricky Ruiz trying to pump up his doubles partner. You also notice that Samson is letting Ricky play the left, and they're also going to be in the finals of the singles well, finals. Been playing the left on his serve the entire match, and that ball does squelch. Thank you. A lot of squelching going on in there. That was more of a shave. Five but serving one. Five serves one. We're going. Hold it, hold it. That's Ooh. an avoidable there. Very well could have been. Yeah. Ricky knew that ball hung up and yeah, made no attempt. We just found out why racquetball players Five, play racquetball. One. one of the women pros walks by and reached down to get that ball that was walking, and she just completely missed the ball <laughs> with her hand. If she had a racket, she could have popped it right into her pocket. And Oh, look at that shot right there from Samson. Just catches that corner. Gabina almost diving in to get it. That was a schwelch, a, a shave and a squelch kind of combination. Recovery shot there from Cambino. And then Samson just crushes that ball straight back down the right. First man coming in. With an angle right on out. it. This is Five, remarkable. Seven, one. A skinny angle he creates on that ball from right up against that right wall. It's a skinny angle. That's true. That ball stays in. Oh, another tough shot right there for Sal. Looks like he's pressing a little bit to me, Dave. He hasn't been able to put the ball down thus far in this tiebreak. I saw Sal struggle with the same kind of thing against Tyree in the first round there, Dave. Actually had a very good opportunity to win that match and missed some crucial shots there in that tiebreak. 
You're watching the World Three Wall Ball Outdoor Handball Championships. We're using the big ball right here for the men's double doubles finals. Earlier we had the men's semifinals and the small ball. And yeah, we are going back and forth. There's uh, a different sizes of balls if you are just tuning in and you, you don't know the sport of handball or if you're a friend of uh, someone who is playing right now or a family member who plays exclusively with that big ball. We have a small ball and a big ball and some of these players are crossing over and, and playing both. They can play up to three divisions. Actually, the, it's the fireball. So for those of you who maybe can't tell, we actually are playing with a small ball fireball, which is a reddish pink color. It looks like the big ball, but it, it actually isn't. Chip Morales is going to make sure that he lets the uh, players know that they're playing to 15 and not to 11. That actually happens quite a bit in the NFL. I see the referees come up to Joe <laughs> Buck and <laughs> Troy Aikman, ask them for clarification on the rules. It happens here and it happens there. Yeah. I just want to make sure that they get the rules correctly. I was just picking his brain. All the players understand. Okay. Okay, hold on, though. Hold There, there, there are a lot of rule changes here, and uh, the players have tried to adapt to this just a little bit. You know, I was talking to Samson and, and Ricky. They say, we play to 12 points where we're at. There's rally scoring. When they play doubles, they only let one server serve. And, I mean, they, they have a lot of different rules. So, uh, But when he goes to the next uh, the next park in California, they have it, They only play to seven points there. Hmm. Some play one game to 15, one game to 21. So they, Six serving one. There's a lot of different rules changes. These guys are playing to 15 here in the tiebreaker. We just wanted to make it clear to them that they were playing to 15. Down ball. That's why we had Chip Morales come over for a little clarification. Here's six serving one. Second server, Ricky Ruiz, six to one. Ooh, backhanded fist did not get to it. Both teams look a little tentative right now, Dave. Seven serving one. Certainly a huge advantage anytime you can build a lead in the tie break. Ah, uh, the ball hit that corner. Side out. One serving 15. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking at it. One serving seven. Sorry. Scores <laughs> one serve seven. One serving seven. Jim Morales carrying on a conversation with himself during the rally with the microphone on. One serving seven. Short. That's a side out, and Sal knew it. That's just a really bad air there. Seven serving one. You have to think if Samson and Ricky can score three or four points here. Very difficult for Sal and Cambino to come back. One down. Second man. You see Seven, seven Cambino one. and Sal actually switching sides depending on who serves. Ball, ball, ball. Point. That was Sal Duenas hitting that ball up and over the court. Eight serving one. Eight serves one. Plays that ball from his knees, incredible. Everything over to the left. Look at that, the first attempt, and he almost gets it back over that, that court right there, and the crowd liked it too. Dave, that could have actually gone over the sidewall and back in, which we have not really seen here. I don't think we have yet. At least, point. at least not in big ball. Nine serving one. Nine serves one. I know you can't see the full court right now because players are standing in front of you, but. One serving nine. But there was a side out. One serves nine. Aggressive return there from Samson. Unforced there, there from Ricky. That was an easy shot, about as easy a shot as you can get. Point. Hold on. Two serving nine. 
Two serves nine. The actual rules state, Dave, and I'm not looking at a rule book, but I remember looking this up, and I'll, I'll wait for this rally to end. Oh, wow. Nice recovery from Gabino. Backhand. Ball hits the side wall. Dug out, made it to the front wall. Look at Sal. Look at Ricky. Amazing. Diving in. Racquetball pros are loving this. Oh, and the call is called over there by the referee. Now, I'm going to tell you about the serve. After you bounce the I remember reading this one time. After you bounce the ball to the ground, you have to strike the ball. You can't, you can't uh, you know, grab it. I mean, after the, the referee calls the score, you bounce it, you have to hit it. What we're well, seeing if it's from a bad bounce, you can yeah, catch that's, it. That's true, yeah. But what we're seeing from Gabino is that he's bouncing it, throwing it against the sidewall after the service called by the ref. You seem to be pretty adamant about it. Good ball. It's, it's kind of annoying me for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why. It's like the lady with the fan in Kansas City at the Nationals yeah. when you, uh, the reflection off the off the wall. That's kind of the same thing it's doing to me, as it did to you. Good two, memory. 2008 That's during the Paul Brady match. Two and a half years ago. Uh -huh. We've done about 454 matches since then. Still it, it's the same thing. It. It's the same thing that happened to you. Touche. It, it was 11 to seven. Paul Brady was uh, was in the lead. Timeout. But that was inside out here. We're doing the men's uh, uh, big ball doubles finals at the Stratosphere. Tell us a little bit about uh, uh, the feeling you get of having these racquetball pros coming and hanging out here at the event. Well, this is very cool. You've got some of the top racquetball players in the world who are also competing for world titles out here coming to check out some of the handball action on the show court here. Yeah, you know, earlier we saw uh, Marty Hogan hanging out. You know, he did play in the handball version, and Marty is the, was the first ever million dollar racquetball earner, but then over his career, he earned close to $3 million. But, you know, Marty Hogan uh, was out here entering the handball big ball doubles in, in this exact tournament in, in these guys' brackets here, but he was also part of the CPR Legends uh, playing racquetball on the outdoor court, and he was one of the very first winners. In fact, he won a lot of outdoor championships and a lot of indoor championships as well. Really an amazing match in that Legends final today. 11-10, Cliff Swain and his partner defeating handball player Robert Sostry and his partner. Actually, Sostry and his partner led 10-8 and just skipped a ball by about a centimeter. That was called by the linesman. Ball did skip, though, and they ended up losing that match 11-10. And you heard the crowd go absolutely crazy during that. But then again, there was a lot of stuff going on in, that, in the stands during that match, which was crazy in its own right. Well, by a lot of stuff, you mean a brawl. <laughs> it was actually a fist fight, a brawl. There were, there were players that didn't even know <laughs> who the, the opponents were, and they were betting on them. I mean, they, just, they came up to me and said, which one's the best one out of these guys? I, oh, the guy that has the Nine word Swain 32. on his back? You might want to put some money on that, put some bags of sand. And the guy, oh, okay, thanks, buddy. And they were wagering big, big bags of sand just off word from someone they didn't even know. Statistically, they've done studies. You're just as likely to pick a winner having not knowing no one on either team as you are studying all the players and stats. Not sure I was too eloquent in describing that. <laughs> Sounds like you're referring to like a high lie betting where mm. people just look at the color of their uniforms and have pretty good luck. Some people like the action. We're going to 15. It's 10 to 2. Look at that. Get right there from South Duenas. That ball was good. It just clips Ricky in the nose. But that was a nice backhanded flip from Gabino Velasquez, and he said sorry to Ricky. All right. Okay. 10 serving 2. Oh, just took a little bit off of that. Oh, look at that dig right there, Dave. Interesting, Dave. Samson pretty quiet here. Wow, another one. 
That's a great shot. What do these guys do, Dave, when they, what do they do when they play on pavement back home in Southern California? Right here is a surface where you can dive. It's you actually see these guys. Oh, look at that. They're stationary dives a lot of the time. You can do that on the cement. You just that's can't true. do the sliding dive. Yeah, you're right. That's sort 12 of serving two. You need to get down to get it, and that's how you do it. I, it, I believe the surface makes it a little bit more exciting, though, because you're, you're seeing full-on dives two. as opposed to that stationary one. I agree. By the way, all of my dives on the surf, on any surface is that stationary one where you just kind of fall down. So you're still talking about the dives. We've got championship point here for a world championship. 14 serving two. And this is championship point, 14 to two, and a chance to get that yellow jersey. Oh, look at that dig right there from Ricky. Absolutely amazing. Incredible. And there they get it right there to win the championship, the yellow jersey, wow. and the Bucks. Hey. That was absolutely amazing, Dave. An incredible rally. I mean, just getting out of the way was amazing. On his knees, jumped up. Ricky Ruiz is a ballerina. Ricky winning the cash with his doubles partner, Sam San Hernandez. And what do you think of, I mean, like watching these guys play, uh, just the athleticism. I mean, do you have a different look on uh, outlook on the big ball players now that you've been able to really sit down and analyze them, Dave? Absolutely incredible, incredibly impressive. Cat-like reflexes, moving like a cat across the court. These guys are just phenomenal athletes, and that's why they're the best in the world. I've never really seen anything like this. And I, I know some of the crowd, they, they've seen it, but uh, uh, we have the racquetball pros out here. We have uh, uh, fans that have never really watched it. And now the crowd's doing what they've been doing, you know, pretty much all day long, and that is starting to chant. Sam San Hernandez, it is his birthday today, so that's why they are giving him the happy birthday. I believe he turns 20, uh, 20 years young today, or maybe he's, yeah, I believe he's 20. 20 years young, Samson Hernandez. We're going to try to get uh, either Ricky or Samson in the, the booth here today. Great present there for the, the birthday boy, a world title. And we're guaranteed a slam here in the big ball because the winning team will face each other tomorrow in the singles. We're going to get Ricky Ruiz in the booth here and talk to him a little bit about this doubles. We've already talked to Ricky earlier today after he defeated that legend, Gio Tellez. Uh, you, you know, we didn't talk, you know, first off, congratulations Thank you. on that win here. It's a little different experience this time from the last one where it was 105 degrees. How do you feel about this temperature and the weather right now, Ricky? Right now it feels great. I'm not, I'm not a little bit, I'm just a little bit tired, nothing. Doubles, you don't really get tired, but I feel great right now, I feel good. Okay, you know, uh, Dave Fink and I, we, um, we're sitting back here trying to analyze this. You guys are absolutely amazing athletes, diving for balls, and when you're on the ground, they jam it right at you, and you jump up from there. How do you do that? I've never really <laughs> seen that before. To the, uh, the anticipation, I knew I knew Samson was going to be there, so I knew he had a better shot than me, so I just had to jump out of the way, and he was going to do something with it. Now, you don't play on the surface. You don't have the ability to dive and slide on the surface, and yet it seems like you guys are so comfortable doing that. What, what do you do back home? I mean, Dave calls it a stationary dive where you just kind of fall down and do those backhanded flips. Uh, do you guys do the stationary back home and, and you're smart or you just cut up your knees and go for it? Just whatever shot, whatever shot you have available. It's nothing, nothing different. You just either a backhand or whatever you have going. You don't really think about it. You just dive at the time. It's the moment you just zoned in. It's all about how many bags of sand. <laughs> <laughs> you are thinking about that, though. Okay, and talk about that sand. You, you're in the sand right now and you have a chance to win much more sand. Yeah. Uh, Dave uh, Fink here also uh, admitted that uh, uh, no matter what, somebody's gonna slam tomorrow because yeah. you two, your doubles partners, you and your double yeah. partner, Samson Hernandez, are gonna play each other. Uh, I noticed that for most of the match here, you were playing the left side. Was that Samson who was saying, okay, I'm gonna try to wear out, I, I wanna win this, but I want my doubles partner to get a no, little bit no. tired? No, that's how we usually play. I stay on the left and he sits on the right because I have a he likes to well control the game on the left, so he likes to you know, just try to kick, kill the ball on the right, and he was doing better than I was today on the right. Yeah, it's absolutely amazing watching you guys play together. Do you go around California and yeah. uh, collect sand, you too? Yeah, well, we've won the past four tournaments out there in Southern California, so the doubles, so 
we've been doing pretty good together. And, and really quickly, going back to, to Gio uh, Tellez, uh, you know, we're talking about him being a legend. Could you even describe uh, a guy like that, 47 years old, is uh, uh, competing with you guys, and and uh, and he's a legend in the game, and nobody really knows about the sport of handball yep. or big ball. Uh, you know, talk about him really briefly. I saw him over here, and I was I was talking to him. This guy's won so many things. Yeah. I mean, is he was uh, one of, uh, Hernandez said that uh, that you know he's one of the guys that kind of got him into game. Just you so looked up to him since you were a little tiny kid. Yeah, he was winning turns before we were even born. So you know, got to respect him no matter what. He's the he's a real clean, clean player. He doesn't cheat. He, he's an honest player. I never have nothing bad to say about him. He's a great guy. You know, I looked over in the stands. He was the first guy sitting in the front row watching you guys. That must <laughs> feel also pretty good to know that the guy that you used to sit in the front row watching is is watching you. Hey, tomorrow you have a singles. Uh, you, you don't have to worry about doubles anymore. How are you going to prepare for tomorrow's match knowing that the heat's going to be out there? It's going to be a late game. That's going to be at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, which means it's probably going to be right in the dead part of the uh, of the heat here. You know, just keep what I did today in the past four days. Just, you know, stay motivated, you know, focus, not anything, you know, get in my way. And just minimize my hand errors and just, you know, hopefully beat them. Okay, we're going to let you go back to the hotel and, and, and unwind and and try to ice down and try to get some shake off some of this heat. Okay. Uh, congratulations Thank on you. the doubles Thank win. And also congratulate your uh, doubles partner, Samson okay. Hernandez, for cool. the work there. We'll see you tomorrow, uh, and we'll have you in the booth after you after you win that one, right? Hopefully. Okay. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> That's Ricky Ruiz. Good buddy, Ricky, who's, uh, you know, going out, doing some great things, not only in uh, three wall, small ball, but also big ball, and as now a pro qualifier uh, in the four wall sector. So he plays any ball, any wall. Uh, Ricky Ruiz. Uh, Dave, you'll be back tomorrow. We have some matches going on to the live webcast. Uh, we're going to wrap it up but really quickly here. Just sum up what you what you feel about these big ball players uh, uh, and the hype that they have out here and their athleticism and what you saw here today, Dave. Well, you hear a lot of hype about these big ball players and having really never seen them compete, you're just really not sure what to expect, but it certainly exceeded any expectations that I had. These guys were incredibly impressive. They're quick. They're powerful, they're precise, and they're the best three ball, big ball players in the world. Yeah, uh, there's nothing else you can say about that. As we pan out and look at what's going on here on the court, you can see they have also a very uh, tight-knit family out here. Uh, the big ball players doing a lot of uh, posing on the show court. This is a very big experience for them. It's almost like, it's, it's almost like when uh, uh, America sends over a team to Italy and does the Federation Cup. And the Federation Cup, you know, they're very Im impressed with the surrounding. They take a lot of pictures as a mm -hmm. team. You're seeing the big ball players do this exact thing that's showing up on the live webcast right now. Uh, you know, this very same thing where they're posing as a group, and it's a, it's a great experience for them. They feel like they're part of something uh, that they've never really been a part of. There's really no organization that's been holding these guys together and look at it. They feel like they're, they're part of a system, and it's, you know, it's obviously very inspiring to them. It's also inspiring to us. We are going to take a break. We are going to leave for this evening and be back for some more finals action tomorrow uh, right here, brought to you by NiftyTV.com. We have uh, much more stuff. It will be posted on WPHLive.tv, the webcast schedule. Go to WPHLive.tv, then hit the message board tab that runs across the top, and we'll give you the webcast schedule for tomorrow. This evening, we're going to wind it down for World Outdoor Racquetball and the Stratosphere as well as world players of handball. Dave Fink, my broadcast partner, Omar Lemus, Jeff Castor, Chris Garand, Fred Lewis, and all of those behind the scenes that helped put this one on. We're going to say good night. Thank you for tuning in to this live webcast. WePlayHandball.com. Good evening.